Guys, there's something I really, really want to talk about. It's been weighing heavy on my heart for a couple of weeks. Um, since the season started, since day one, I gave, I gave it slack on opening day because it was opening day, it was crowded. But I have something that I just need to get off my chest. Stadium etiquette. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> it's, about, it's about to get real deep, guys. Oh, my God. Buckle up. I can't hold it back From the SodPod.com studios. Telling stories from around our little piece of Texas. Ooh, baby. This is the Doghouse Podcast with Michael, Chase, and Seth. Hello. Hello. Talking all things baseball in the Yellow City. Welcome to Episode 8 of the Doghouse Sports Talk Podcast from the SodPod.com studios. We start off with a get-to-know-your-sod-poodles players and interview with Hudson Potts before we finish out our time at Fire Slice Pizzeria. All right, Sod Poodle Nation. Michael Knowles and Chase Whitney here. We are on field level at Hodgetown. We are doing another segment of Get to Know Your Sod Poodles, and we've got Hudson Potts here. So, Hudson, we're going to start out with the very first question. How did you get into baseball, and what got you interested in baseball at a young age, and what got you where you are today? Uh, it started ever since, like, before I can remember. Uh, me and my dad, always in the backyard, hitting off the tee or uh, doing stuff like that. I remember we used to, like, skip rocks and throw rocks in the – you know, open open field behind our house, and we'd always. That's just how I started throwing, and then kind of led into baseball. And I've always I played other sports growing up, but it's always been baseball, yes, sir. So Hudson Potts is a is a Texas boy, of course, from from South Lake. Hudson, being from South Lake, did you play football in high school, or was it just baseball? I know they got that storied program, uh, South Lake Carroll. Yeah, I've, I've, I just played baseball in high school, but. You know, everyone that finds out I'm from South Lake around here, always that's the first thing they ask me is if I if I uh, played football. But no, I did not. But um, it was all, I was always at the football games with my friends, and you know, it was fun to watch down there. So we've got to ask the fans want to know what's your favorite food. We're expecting a really generic Texas answer, but tell us what your favorite food is. Uh, I could eat pizza for every meal if I could. I would eat just <laughs> just, some, just some pepperoni pizza. I could eat it all the time, but can't do that when I'm out here playing baseball. Here, so. All right, so tell us a little bit about um, um, baseball and getting drafted by the Padres organization and what it's been like in the Padres organization and working your way up to where you are now in Amarillo with the Sod Poodles. Yeah, it's been it's been exciting since the very beginning. Uh, drafted out of high school and, and going this route, and it's been it's been a lot of fun and, and more than I can imagine. Uh, you learn a lot every year. I just realize, you, you know, you think back every you think back every now and then and be like and think like wow, like there, like stuff that might be easier to me now and I don't even think about doing it like a couple of years ago when I was first getting started like I that, that felt like it was so far away but it's been it's been a lot of fun and and all these guys around me are a lot of fun so what do you think about Amarillo I'll tell you Amarillo is so excited to have affiliated baseball back and have this fan base we've had over a hundred thousand fans come out tell us how it feels for you to be in Amarillo and what you like about Amarillo most yeah it's been awesome uh, I can speak for all of us on this uh the fans have been great. Like you know, it's built, you know, almost full house every night. I feel like so. Uh, it's been fun. This this park's awesome, and and the city. You know, we're we're still getting used to all of it right now, but uh, it's got everything you need, and it's been it's been a good time. So, what do you contribute to your success thus far? I'm still a young guy in the organization, a top prospect in the Padres organization. Um, so, there's been a lot of eyes on you. AJ Preller has some faith in you. Tell us what has contributed to your success and what you think you need to do to keep that success strong and keep going full full steam ahead. Yeah, I think it's just been uh, working working as hard as I can um, day in, day out with, with all the resources I have, you know, all the coaches around me and all the coordinators that come through. Uh, just try to, you know, give them all and help out guys around me and, and try to learn from other guys that have been around uh, longer. So um, I'll just say that and, you know, and for the future, I think just try to be more consistent and um, just stay stay about my work and, and try to you know, stay level-headed. Sod Poodle fans, Michael Knowles, Chase Whitney here on field level in the Sod Poodles dugout with your man Hudson Potts. We appreciate you guys listening. Stay tuned to the sodpod.com, the doghouse on the sodpod.com. So, listeners, if you were doing this, please stop. <laughs> <laughs> Please stop doing what I'm about to say, but please keep listening to the podcast. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so when you're sitting in a stadium, no matter how packed it is, 
and I, we counted, and I, it was 22 seats, I believe, on the row. Okay, the middle seat is going to be number 11. Number 11 is the middle. So you start at 1 and go to 22. If you're sitting in seat 18 and 19, inconvenient seat 20, 21, 22. Don't inconvenient seat 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Take the short way out. This has been Wayne. Say every single number just to illustrate. Do you know how many times I've stood up so that they could inconvenience the masses rather than the three people sitting to the right of them? Well, but it's closer for me to go the other direction because that's where I'm headed after I get back up to the concourse. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. (laughs) But please, just inconvenience the other three. Don't inconvenience the other seven. Basically, if you see a guy sitting in the row on the third base side wearing a red hat, just. Don't go near them, okay? Yeah. I'm going to have to start changing my hat colors. Yeah. Yeah. If you hear me huffing and puffing and you just walk past 13 people. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. That would yeah. give you a hard time, but I, I'm, I'm the same way. I've been to 10 or 11 games, and it's weighed heavy on me all 10 or 11 games. Well, that's kind of common sense. Yeah. And you had the last seat. That's what seat. I thought. Well, you had the last seat. So regardless, like you have to move literally for anybody on your row that comes down yeah. that stair. So. Yeah. That's why I stick to the sweets. I do it for leg space. I stick to the sweets. You know, don't have to worry about that. Oh yeah, oh big balling. Uh, <laughs> the sweets are awesome. Yeah, yeah. Or or the uh, awesome. yeah or the grass. So I'm I'm all, I'm all or nothing. I'm all or nothing kind of guy. Follow us on all social media outlets. We're at the Sod Pod. The Sod Pod. Find us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. The Sod Pod. This is the doghouse on the sodpod.com. So here's here's some of the fun things about baseball, and we, we did you know playing in high school, you see in college, whatever. Kyle Overstreet, Alabama boy, and his walk up song is Garth Brooks. <laughs> I got friends in low places. I love it. That's Man. what I'm talking about. Here. See, my walk up song in college, my freshman year, was Garth Brooks Rodeo. Oh, okay. Oh, see, so that's good too. Y'all whenever I like first it, came yeah. in, Kyle Overstreet uh, was playing. I think. The first game that I went to, he was he was in the lineup that day, and I heard "Friends in Low Places," and I'm like, "Yeah, that's what I'm talking yeah. about." I, yeah, <laughs> if you pick yeah. a good walk up song, I'm not saying doing "Baby Shark" for the kids. That's that's that sucks because I, I hear that song <laughs> all day. But you pick up those good songs where everybody, what's um, Charlie Blackman for the Rockies does, "I Don't Want to Lose Your Love Tonight," oh, and the whole yeah. crowd sings it every time he's come up oh, to man. bat. Like that's good stuff. Uh, Josh Reddick when he's with the A's, you st- I think it was like the uh, Baker Street that old. That old '80s song with the saxophone and like people in the A's, stand, stand, yeah, stand, yes, yes, <laughs> and they would come and they would have like plastic saxophones, and the whole crowd would just like sway to his walk-up song and act like they were playing their like fake plastic saxophones. Yeah. That's freaking cool. That's good stuff. So, so <laughs> that's what do what do you, what do you got? Right so, okay, that's great. So, what do you guys? What's your walk-up song? You know, you want you, you if we want to talk about this, we need What's to. What's the song? I like song it. We've been talking own. about doing What's this for a while. Until I die, it's own. kind of country, kind of hip hop. What's that song? Does, has anybody figure that out? Oh, yeah, it's Old Town Road. Oh, Old Town Road. A okay. little Nos. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. yeah. We got four of us here. Who yeah. we got? What we got? So, so this is not mine, but I want to say this is my first time I ever knew about a walk-up song. I was, you know, I'm from Childress, <laughs> and we were not great at baseball, or we weren't great. At, we are good now. We weren't when I was playing. I was one of like three people on the team that could actually catch a baseball. But Perryton, to start. But Perryton <laughs> was real good. I mean, we played him three times my sophomore year, and the cumulative score was like seventy-four to two. <laughs> but the first time I knew you could actually have a walk-up song because I never paid attention at the Ranger games. Um, it was when uh, Welcome to Atlanta came out. Because oh, that also wow. shows how old I am. Oh, wow. I was like, this is the coolest thing ever. Like, it was so cool. So it was like, it has a special place. because the first one I realized. <laughs> such a good song. Um, but, man, I don't know. I'm trying to think what mine would be. I'd probably have to go with, like, Coolio, something new. You know, or yeah, maybe Sabotage by, by uh, Beastie Boys. <laughs> man, I think I would have to go Crazy Train. Ooh, oh my god, oh you stole mine. Oh. Did I? <laughs> <laughs> I want the all aboard part. The all aboard. Is that the part you want to? That's yeah. the part I want to. Uh, well, I guess but we're walking you know up what? to the same I, part. I can adapt. I will I yeah. will come up with something new. Yeah. Okay, so Chase, let's, let's fill this in before they think of something new. 
I'll tell you the coolest ones I, I heard was when I was coaching. I was doing a student teaching at Childress before I graduated, and our leadoff hitter. Was, I didn't know the I didn't know the song. I'm not a huge heavy metal guy, but it's like Blackstone Cherry or something. It's called Rainmaker, but it just like it kind of builds up and she goes, "Here comes the rain." And just like song just breaks out. He's our leadoff hitter. And he's just like mashing bombs left and right. <laughs> so they call him the Rainmaker. Like that was very fitting. That was very cool. So the, there's this group called the Bad Wolves. And they do a cover of uh, the Cranberries zombies. zombies. I love all it. Day. The chorus from that song, dude. All yeah. day. Yeah, that yeah, would be my walk-up like song. If I was playing today, that would be yeah. my walk-up song. Or if I played for the Dodgers, it'd be um, <laughs> Tupac. Cal- uh, <laughs> California <laughs> love. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a lot I mean, of good ones. Kelly Jansen actually. You can, ha- you can have Crazy song. Train. No, I'll I give it to no, you. No, I don't even too. want it. I don't oh, even want okay. it anymore. <laughs> Sorry, I don't even want it anymore. I'm going Stevie Ray Vaughan, Texas Flood. Oh, yes. Get him in the mood. You know, I mean. My my favorite song of all time is uh, "Lit." I am my own worst enemy, so I'd probably be mine if I had to. If I had to like gun to the head, what's your walk up song? "Lit." I am my own worst enemy. You play that song anywhere, I'll jump up and down yeah, with you all day good. long. Please tell me why. <laughs> but that's the thing, man. Like I wish the other guys would kind of take that approach to uh, student walk up songs. By the way, I don't know. You're a big Ranger fan, so you might know this. You don't like the Rangers, so you won't know this. Uh, you know who Emily Jones is? Are yeah. you a Ranger fan? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so she's the I'm reporter. not a Ranger fan, but you know, I like I mean by default, I don't being dislike here in Texas. Them, I'm <laughs> well, Emily Chase Jones, dislikes them. <laughs> but before, they are what they are. Yeah. yeah, before Twitter, I mean, really she was the person to interact with the players, so you really get to feel for them or whatever. Well, her and Mike Napoli had a really good relationship. And uh, they put a bet on the 2011 finals between my because Mike Napoli's from Miami and Miami played Dallas and she's you know, she's actually from Lubbock te- or Plainview. She's from tech, Plainview. Yep. Tech grad, and they had a pretty good friendship. And so they made a bet. I don't know if Dallas lost. I don't know what he was going to do. But if if Dallas won, then she got to pick his walk up songs for an entire game. Oh, and that's his, cool. And his first at best, only time I've, I've seen a major league player like break a smile, his first at bat was, man, I feel like a woman. <laughs> nice. Oh, man, nice. it was so good. Nice. And I think Mike Young picked out the next one, and he uh, picked a uh, culture club, Do You Really Want to Hurt Me? <laughs> it was it was pretty fun because, you know, it, obviously the broadcast really got into it and made sure you heard what was going on. But those are pretty good ones. Join the conversation on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Search for The Sod Pod, and be sure to subscribe for free wherever you catch your favorite podcasts. The Sodpod.com Studios. Telling stories from around our little piece of Texas.